Into the Nexus is a production of AMove.TV. Bookmark AMove TV for other great video games and esports podcasts. Into the Nexus is sponsored by listeners like you via patreon.com slash ITN. Greetings and welcome back, heroes. It's time for Into the Nexus, the podcast, all about Heroes of the Storm. I'm Garrett Weinzerl. He's Kyle Ferguson. And we are joined also by the returning Jeff Ganada. Welcome back, Jeff. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to be back. New season, new possibilities, new skins. Ah, oh, what a time. What a time to be alive. Yeah, we just need we needed a hero announcement, right? So you could have been like, new hero! Yeah. But, like, Rainer and Asmodan are kind of, you know, new heroes. Feel new. They got that new that new sheen on them, for sure. <laughs> Someone went out to the uh, to the used hero lot, opened up the door on the Rainer and the Asmodan, and got the, the can of new car scent and just... Well, not more than that. They set Rainer's head on fire and gave him a rad motorcycle, which is <laughs> the cooler, even cooler thing. And they gave uh, Asmodan tank treads. Yeah, baby. And uh, diesel smoke shooting out his butt. He's full on. He's full on that the bad guy from the Mad Max movie. Yeah, he's 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 a Morton uh, Asmo. That's so good. So good. <laughs> How you doing, Kyle? No, oh, I'm doing good. You know, my boy Rainer showing off that taunt. No one uses taunts, but that's an impressive one because no one plays Rainer. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, look at me with my mastery taunt. Oh. Oh, it's been good, and I uh, I am thoroughly spent. I did all my placement matches on the first day, the best day to do them on, because he got about, like, you know, 75% serious mode, 25%, ooh, what's this? And by day two, it's just, ooh, what's this at that point? You got to hit hard that first day. Ooh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I had really, really good games yesterday, and then today uh, just fell off a cliff. Couldn't find a win. <laughs> Ugh. We had, uh, you know, Kyle does the coaching for me on Wednesdays. Uh, I stream over there on uh, caffeine.tv slash Jeff Canada. And uh, a little plug there. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I like that laugh. <laughs> I was I was commenting to a friend this morning that um, my goodness, was that is that fun for me? <laughs> I don't know if it's fun for Kyle. I won't speak for him. But my goodness, it is. I was it was like white knuckle, really awesome couple of games and I realized that I have an experience there that I don't think anybody else can have in the game because I have a coach who is in my ear in real time, helping shot calling, looking at the map for me, like like a cool Jiminy Cricket on my shoulder, being awesome and not playing at the same time, literally just there for me to help me. And it's incredibly exhilarating, and I feel like I wish there was a way more people could experience that because it is awesome. I, I'm not I, I'm not sure about the the Jiminy Cricket analogy. I mean, maybe if Jiminy Cricket was on Pinocchio's shoulder, helping him win at all the gambling games on that island. <laughs> well, he often does the Jiminy Cricket thing, Kyle. That is, he says, uh, "Don't go there. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't give in to your don't give in to your worst uh, impulses by leaping into the center of the bad people and <laughs> going to try to pick up that orb for no reason. I, know I would you... say it's more like a fast-talking emperor from <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> it's, like, it's a lot of good, advance, advance, good. Yeah, aggression, yes, good. <laughs> give in to your hate. <laughs> it's so true. Like so, so much of the lower league play is just, we got to kill. Yeah, let's have a picnic. It's like, no. Full word in particular, you were on Muradin, and we got to play with your jump. It gives you armor, so always being aggressive with that is the right thing to do. We farmed up your level one Q from the beginning and just had you smashing folks. And it's just so rewarding as a coach, as a player, to see that transformation in one of your students to just being aggressive, to turning it on. Because everyone wants to win hard. They just don't know quite when to throw that switch you yeah. want this orb don't you <laughs> every hero on the opposing team is an enemy of our win rate <laughs> <laughs> yeah and sometimes on our own team <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that's that can happen. That can happen. I I just uh, I just got read the riot act by uh, double tank on my team, but with twenty deaths between them, uh, about how low my damage was. Mm. It's definitely your fault that they died all those times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I became the sacrificial lamb this week as uh, too many melee with my early pick Varian, and then they stacked melee after me. But you know. It, it was Colossal Smash here trying to add some burst to the pile. But that, that actually is a bit of a, a thing right now. you got to be careful. Don't stack Lunara Maltheal. It's pretty common to happen right now in your games. People are Those are comfort picks for a lot of folk. And when you go two daughters, no one on that enemy team is really going to care. Mm. Ah, oh, are we, are we doing? Everybody's always mostly dead. Yeah, or, or they're like <laughs> slightly fatigued. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we doing like what grinds my gears right now? Because I've got one. Ooh, go for it. Don't pick Zuljan if you want to win. Oh, uh, Zul, well, Zuljan is the yeah. is the key component of every loss I've had this week. Pick Zuljan, wow. you lose. I don't know if it's like just Rainer is infinitely a bet like a just concrete black and white is a better sustain. Uh, or that Zul'jin has just always kind of been bad, and now he's just old and moldy and still bad. Hmm. He requires a lot of active attention, and in the early game, he has trouble bringing it. So you gotta, you gotta trust him. You gotta, you gotta really just drag him along to that victory, and he'll take you with him. But it, you know, it, it's more of a, it's you're driving the car. Zul'jin's the guy in the back. In the you know kind of road warrior analogy, going woo and firing wildly into the air. <laughs> I, like- I had a game this week where uh, last pick uh, was a healer. The guy said, "Don't worry, I got this. I got heals." We all picked, and he went with Abathur, and we all went, "What? What? What, what did you do that for?" <laughs> and he said, D- "Don't worry, I heal." And there was a lot of uh, a lot of doubt, and we owned that game. We owned that game, and he at the end said, "See, I heal," and he had like twelve k heal, so he didn't really heal, but <laughs> we still won. And and he, so he feel he felt uh, emboldened by that. I felt like we 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 gave him the wrong lesson. Wait, the wait, was this was this this week when we we were having like? Because I'm thinking maybe it was uh, Fallout from the the healer in Quick Match Bug where you could end up with a healer on one team but not on the other, and he ended up as like an Abathur against the team of the healer and just owned. And he was like, "Yeah, Abathur healer, what's up? <laughs> Ta- taking that into draft, baby. That's a good plan. If it yeah. works, you can't argue with results. <laughs> That's great. That story did not go where I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so great uh well wonderful well well season three has begun uh, there's a lot to talk about let's move into this week's heroes of the storm news we're on boys <laughs> let's liven up this place point me to the stage click the play button and let's get started season three is here it has begun uh have you two started your placements cal i know you have i'm done i'm done um, and the only reason I ask uh, is because I wasn't sure if you finished because you did not have just one placement game. No, it was all ten. <laughs> Your tweet had me dying, man. I, you know, I was I was a little sad about it, but this wasn't performance-based matchmaking time. We had a month-long delay, so we could work in these extra bands. Performance-based matchmaking was a part of that conversation, and it did not make it in, which means the game isn't quite remembering our performance. I mean, what really kind of was the beauty, the, the, the crown of that moment where the game still didn't know who I am and, and where to put me was when I got in one of my placement games. I'm like, hello. And, and everyone's like, are you, are you playing the right game? You sound a little too joyous. And this guy's like, let me check his profile. Yeah, yeah. This guy's played in every season so far. I don't know why he's not dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a direct I mean- quote? <laughs> And th- this is directly what happened. I responded that Dota killed my soul a long time ago, and <laughs> let's have a great match. And so, not only that, but I completely owned my URL solo lane, and we won a nine-minute Battlefield of Eternity with those oh guys. Dude, you need I'm to like f- start role playing like Heroes Joker. Like you just you've just succumbed to the madness. Uh, and, oh wow, that's good. It was a it, it was a mixed bag, and and placements are always crazy town i fought you know masters players because things get shaken up a little bit and those masters error tools do not play like diamonds error tools and 
I was over trusting in my beginning games, you know, picking things like blaze. That's a little more like, let me solo and I'll follow up your, Oh, there's no, so, there's no starting sun. So many Artanises. I have no idea why that happened, but I really settled on your and Varian in the end taunt Varian. Hmm. You're so you're actually picking up the URL. Oh, oh yeah. You're not oh, seeing, you're not seeing first, uh, four bands URL. Uh, cause we have four bands, at the very beginning now, there are four heroes that are just, boop, off the table before you even get to select a hero. Chromie and Garrosh don't get to play this video game anymore. No, <laughs> yeah, they true. really don't, man. It and doesn't matter your league, evidently. Those just those are the heroes that don't get to play. I am okay with that. I am very okay with that. Um, yeah, I'm seeing that as well. It, like, it, it feels like uh, Garrosh, Chromie, uh, Genji, and Raynor for me are like, almost guaranteed to just not be in your drafted games. May, there's a little wiggle room there with Yorel, and I feel like the wiggle is usually between Genji and Yorel. Like, that's where where the variance I'm seeing, at least in my bands uh, this week, is happening. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure the fear of Garrosh and Chromie are justified in my league, but it just feels like that's what everybody's doing, so that's what everybody does. I don't know. And these are kind of messages raining from on high. There's been tweets from popular streamers and pros saying that these are your bands. And when they add their list, their list includes things like Abathur. And yeah. even in Diamond, I'm sitting there going, not really a concern. <laughs> and I think the this week, especially that Rainer has has been a just regular ban out of everything in my league. And I think, I, I know we'll get to this, but I think that Asmo is the much more potent uh, of the two reworks. Like the, the Asmo has had bigger swings, I think, at least in my league, than than Raynor did. So uh, I I don't even understand that ban really. I mean that's that's layered, right? Because I'm 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 kind of with you, Jeff. I think Asmodan is the sleeper. Everyone is the talk I have seen everywhere since Tuesday is that just about how strong Raynor is, about how strong his rework is, even though. Uh, he's been reined in a little bit. They've they've obviously fixed the bugs that we were seeing on on uh, PTR, but he also received a bit of a nerf. Um, but the 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 narrative is still the same that Rainer is is busted. Um, he I I don't necessarily disagree with that. He is still extremely strong, uh, but like I am dying to Asvidan orbs. <laughs> like, yeah, they are hitting like complete trucks. And it, I didn't really consider this as an outcome because Kyle, you and I, for the last couple of weeks, when we, you know, we we knew this rework was coming. Last week, we actually got a chance to play with the rework and see what it looked like. And we both weeks, we kind of came around, or came away saying, "Yeah, some cool stuff with Asmodan, but you should just play Chromie." I don't think either of us consider. Oh crap! Right, this is going live the same time as uh, six full bands. No one's gonna get to play Chromie anymore. So just play Asmodan. <laughs> So as it's had other impacts too, like right now there, and I never use this word because it's it's kind of you know just it dismisses skill. Dumpster, there Jaina is running around dumpstering people, <laughs> and it is crazy town. And right now she's taking the level seven ice flows where she increases the width of her cone of cold and re reduces the cooldown. What you do on Jaina right now is run into melee. Get your ice, uh, your water elemental to chill everybody and just blow everybody away. Blow Hanzo away, blow entire the entire back line gone. The tanks, ETC, tries to power sliding, jump in your ice block, hide. Hide it out. <laughs> then ice, then do that Kona cold again. And they're gone. So these Chromies became like Jaina players. And you're not wrong about the Asmodan switch over there either. Yeah, it's just it was something I, I, I didn't really consider with the extra bands coming in. And, and now it's here. Um, like I'm, I'm not saying I'm seeing Asmodan everywhere, but when I am seeing it, it's extremely effective. Uh, I think, I think yeah. it's players that liked Asmodan before. Like, I, and I think if you were good at getting stacks with Asmodan, it's not any harder to get stacks. Now there's more tools to get stacks as a result of his rework. So if you were good at it before, you're going to be even better at it now. And they've empowered the orb. Yeah, I yes, think that's there's... the key difference, right? For, uh, just my two cents is uh, what I've observed is it seems like the people that are on Asmodan are the people that have played Asmodan. And it seems like the people that are jumping on Rainer are like, oh, he's the new hotness. I got to play this Rainer. And there's a skill gap there. And maybe that'll, you know, it, that'll get 
weeded out over time. But at least in my league, what I'm noticing is a lot of people are hopping on Rainer and not performing well. But the people who play Asmodan, they know what they're doing. Yeah, because Rainer is old school sustain. Like, there's not a lot of heroes that play the way that <laughs> Rainer plays and and played. Uh, so yeah. I don't. I think people are getting in there without that without that skill set. Um, so we're and I'm just I'm sitting here finally being a Kyle hipster, being like, step back off my Rainer. I liked him before he was popular. Let me show you youngins how it's done. And the stats are backing up the general mood. Asmodan is down about three percent. And Rainer is up 10% to a wow. 57% win rate right now on wow. Hot's Logs. Yeah. Wow. I, but, I tried out Rainer a few times, uh, the new Rainer, and uh, I, I guess I'm just I just don't love counting to four enough to, to love him. <laughs> I mean, is that what I'm supposed to do, is just count to four over and over again? No, 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 they fixed the bug, so there's a little indicator now showing you the three pips under your health bar. Yes, so you don't have to count to four, you can watch for four. Yeah, well, same difference, right? I guess, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, Rainer is quickly evolving to have one really serious build, and it really involves Ace in the Hole and then picking all of the Give Him Some Pepper pictures, along with Giddy Up at 13. Uh, the 16 allows you to uh, activate your pepper so you don't have to count. You can go, I've counted once, let me just skip straight ahead to the next go. And his burst damage on the front end, his lane clear kind of Phoenixy is really powerful. His pushback to deny engages. That's why I've been playing so much Urel, though, is because Rainer only pushes backwards. And if you jump over the top of him, he just engages you further. So <laughs> now you're in his business. You dislocate him, much like uh, Zul'jin, and he's going to have a bad day. And you do not want to be in Rainer's business. No. <laughs> and, and I think Asmodan is in a good place. It's just you got to stack. And it is actually really, really easy to do if you're in the four-man lane. If you're on a two-lane map you know, might not want to be the solo lane guy anymore. If you're doing all hero hits with like a gluttony build, you're going to get that done wicked fast. Yeah. So a Rainer, another Rainer nerf is coming, right? Like there's no way <laughs> with stats like these that Rainer isn't going to get bopped again. Just in case you weren't, uh, you, you don't know what happened. Um, they, they nerfed his, his level one as ace in the hole passive, uh, now deals 30% more damage to stunned or slowed enemies. It's down from 35, like it was on the, uh, PTR and it only affects heroes. Which is a pretty big hit to things like Hyperion that were, you know, helping clear lanes when a thrall was throwing things out, monsters, minions, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I still think I would say that there's still scenarios where you might want to take Hyperion. I think people are kind of just blindly taking Banshee a little too much, but it's also splitting hairs. Like, yes, there is a very popular and very effective build in his kind of uh, his slow build. Like, you take Ace in the hole, you take his ten percent slow at seven. Yes, on purpose. You're taking a seven percent or a ten percent slow because it activates your level one executioner, and it's just disgusting. Um, but honestly, I really, you could go experiment. It doesn't matter because his, his, his baseline power is enough. Um, I've been uh, actually taking Paint Them Red quite a bit at 16, and it's really it's been making no difference on my Rainer win rate. I think, too, a lot of uh, Rexar players have gotten into Rainer with the permanent Raider on the field. And it works very differently. You need to sort of kite that backwards. So they're going to have to hit with some sort of nerf because as people get better at controlling this thing, it's going to do really, really well. And in fact, there's really only one situation where I regretted taking a Raider this week, and that was into Gul'dan. He had enough splash damage to continually get rid of the Raider. And if I was in a 1v1, he would heal off the Raider with his drain mm. life. <laughs> That's funny. You, you get... really have to babysit that thing, don't you? I mean, it's, it it has a little bit of a mind of its own, but it feels like you. It really is like a Rexar pet. Yeah. yeah in, in fact, it, it the main babysitting thing is the reverse of Rexar. Rexar, you got to really target at Misha and get her in good position so she can do her stun charge. And when you run away, you run away and leave Misha behind because you want to live as Rexar. Whereas on your Banshee here, you got to get it out when you run away because it'll keep going. And if you just leave it passively attached to yourself, it's going to target your target at range. And it's probably even better than if you actually tried to manage it in the first place. Yeah, it also seems a little slow. Um, it's kind of hard to micromanage it. Like, I wish the, the R command, if I didn't uh, place it directly on a target, that it would work more like an attack move command. 
Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of sluggish and always tends to get closer than I want it to. <laughs> to whatever I'm making it attack. Right. It kind of has a settle. It has to, uh, but much like the Banshees in Starcraft, it's something that has to kind of turn itself around, lock on, it's like target locked, and a bunch of, and the person inside is like pressing a bunch of buttons. <laughs> it doesn't just launch in mid flight. It's not a stutter stepping bala. Yeah. But I'm also. So do we re- think that the Banshee is like a smaller drone Banshee that Raynor has, or like. It's just there's a forced perspective thing of it's it's tiny because uh, there's really is a person inside and it's a full on banshee. What's the lore? Uh, I'm going with it's an isometric game, so don't think too hard about scale. Oh. I mean, Rag- Rag- Ragnaros <laughs> is you know a lot smaller than he should be, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I, I think that's what we're forced to say. But Gul'dan was draining it, so there is somebody inside. <laughs> yeah, you can't drain life if there's no person. Good I mean, point. I guess there's a probe can be drained so it's not perfect but he can't drain buildings so it's it's got a life force oh even optimus prime had a life force yeah <laughs> maybe it's just sentient drone that's what i that's what i'm going with yeah yeah and and it, it, honestly my nitpicking of the banshee is just me struggling to find something that i think needs improvement like i don't necessarily i don't really believe that because rainer's destroying and he's gonna get nerfed um, but I'm just trying to find something that seems a little, a little off. And I think the Banshee's control control is a little, a little mushy. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but other than that, um, I have, by the way, any opinion I spout out about, about Rainer is quick match. Have not seen him get through a draft yet. Oh, wow. I've seen some, uh, stellar Rainer play and very oppressive stuff. And yeah, you seen him get do through a draft. have to get in his face multiple times with that pushback. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's nuts, man. It's nuts. Um, let's go back to to placements. Cause folks are placing right now. While we're in the, kind of the subject, um, any other suggestions for for bands, Kyle? I mean, outside of your Garrosh, your Chromie, your Genji Rainer, and Urel, which are the are very popular bands at the moment. Right. Those ones are the muscos in a lot of people's minds. Uh, there are only two real supports when you talk about high end thoughts right now. Malfurion and Deckard. And this is because you bring an engage when your support brings an engage. You're not wasting your tank's health trying to make that engage. You're not exposing them to all that damage. Deckard gets a root. Malfurion gets a root and everybody can follow it up while the rest of the team kind of bails on them, which is going to happen more in lower leagues, making these even more high-priority things. Stukov still getting a lot of bans, and lots of people are cool with it because, hey, it just feels a bummer to try to force yourself into an area and be silenced. Right. Yeah, even though his win rate is not particularly great and hasn't been for a while. No, no, very exposed. Those long cooldowns have really hurt him. The uh, sort of mana leak he does along his heels now. But there's a lot of virulent players in higher leagues where they can land those sweet roots that can be an engage there, but you got to get to 13. So he sort of fills the role. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of like the Chromie where it's, you know, I've had varying degrees of uh, painful games against Chromie and also very successful games against Chromie, but it's just something I like. I'm fine when that's removed from the game when it's, (laughs) I don't need to worry about dodging that many spells. Same way I don't need to worry about dodging this large AOE silence. Exactly. And uh, losing in the early game matters now because we have a more solo lane independent get a lead through that. So if the solo lanes are going well and middles killing people with Chromie and Garrosh, that just feels bad. It's a lot of work to get back in that game. Nobody wants to deal with that. So I'm very curious to see if they're going to try to change it. I mean, Asmodan is such a great example of how they got rid of so much of the frustration. The reign of demons just doesn't have that big of an impact anymore and is more incremental, even like maybe a gargantuan, which is still a little frustrating to see, but it's not going to solo the entire fort because it was left unattended. Yeah. Uh, any any league depend bans, Kyle, things you would consider going down the leagues? I mean, nothing wrong with getting rid of a Kael'thas if you're in lower leagues and people are always bumping into each other. In, uh, I do think in Alterac, because of the team fight and focused area nature, you might want to get rid of things like Thrall or maybe even a Hammer, but the chances of someone picking that are pretty low. 
I don't know, man. After those HGC Hammer games, running into more hammers. And boy, those games were fun to watch. My gosh, it was so cool. Yeah, there's a lot of decision making that's going on in a Hammer game. And in particular, their play is a bit more nuanced rather than just setting up the hover siege and slowly floating yourself <laughs> forward into a battle. Yeah, I would say, I think this week, I don't have my stats in front of me, but I think there's been a Hammer or maybe a quarter of my games. Yeah. I think HGC played a part. Uh, oh, I certainly definitely. have seen more of them. Definitely. I mean, it's a fan favorite. Like there are a lot of folks who really like playing Hammer, and I could see uh, <laughs> seeing Hammer get some get some screen time in HGC, being like, "Oh, oh, all right, I'm doing it. It's okay now." Yeah. And one thing still to consider is that Hanzo on Battlefield of Eternity. It's in the rotation. He does a lot of damage there. His talents come online very early, and it's worth getting rid of him on that particular map good to keep in mind so. it's nice with with extra bands now you can set a, sort of do the required bands and then still have room to be a little creative and play to your what you see developing in the draft you know and i i like that i i think it's fun to be able to go okay well everybody's banning these things it's not just an automatic i'll use up our bands this way we actually have a little leeway to play and actually think about it well and we have this general strategy that anybody can pull off where you just start banning what the enemy team doesn't have. You're not thinking about combos. Oh, ETC, they need an Uther to pull off that sweet cleanse into the Divine Shield, infinite mosh pit kind of business. Like, you can just say they don't have a tank yet. What don't we want to see in this case? And that empowers people to pick those early tanks and those early supports, something that was punished so much in the past. You get a Malfurion on your team early, great. There was a good chance they were going to lose that. They were going to get rid of that in that second ban phase. Yeah, and then I, what I've done a couple of times as, as banner is literally just stick to one roll and go crazy. Just ban all. If we get it first pick or second pick, ban it all out. And that's uh, it's kind of fun to feel like, oh, my, we really are limiting their choices in a very significant way. Yeah, almost to the point where you can start making a read uh, as to what you're going to gu guide them towards for a certain role. Right. Which is, uh, it's interesting to think about it in that way. I just like how much the, the second round bands, uh, like, they're extremely reactive now with having so many front-loaded bands. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just making for, honestly, more interesting matches because we're breaking down these molds that have been used across so many maps and just even getting rid of Something you're going to see on every single map, like Battlefield Turning that Hanzo, people get a little creative around it. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, I'm curious, what are you, uh, what are you taking into your, uh, your placements? Like, what are your, what are the heroes you're? It's funny. On? I've been, I've been, I went back to my, my old, uh, my old faithfuls. Um, as Kyle mentioned, I've been playing a lot of Muradin, uh, Brightwing. Kael'thas and Jaina, like really four of the, well, Kael'thas came a little later, but three of the very first heroes I ever played back in the alpha. Um, I mean, this is like some of the characters that, I mean, the very first character that made me fall in love with this game was Muradin because I was like, oh, I don't die all the, oh, really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it made me, you know, gave me time to understand what was going on and kind of learn the game because I wasn't just constantly dead. Um, so it's fun going back to those characters I have I haven't played in a while, at least in his case. But yeah, those are the those are my four, and I uh, some Lunara as well. Um, but yeah, those are sort of my my go tos. That's good. I know Kyle meant you mentioned the are the Artanis picks popping up earlier in the talk. Yeah. Are you seeing the Artanis picks a lot, Jeff? Because the tons. Bright... I'm surprised. I don't know where that came from, but I'm, I'm seeing Artanis in almost every game. So are you just slamming Brightwing when you see the Artanis? Because, oh my <laughs> god, I had two just disgusting games as Brightwing against Artanis last night. It was like no contest. You just polymorph them right, in, right into that when they're swinging into your team? Yeah, he swings into the team, you polymorph them, which makes their freaking shields not pop. <laughs> so great. <laughs> and your team yeah. just melts them. It's wonderful. Yeah. They willfully engage into your team. <laughs> Does yeah. it stop them, like, where they are in the swippy swap? Yeah. Yes. Wow. It's disgusting. Yeah. I mean, if they, land the, if they land the actual swap, no, but if they're just doing their charge, yes. Yeah. yeah you, can, you can pop it at the peak of their charge, and they'll, they'll stay there as a sheep, which is wonderful. Or crab. So joyous. Yeah. 
Yeah, or it's crap. it's pretty nasty. Um, I mean, all I can come up with is that you know, we talked about in previous weeks, Sonia Artana. Oh, did I lose you both? Picks that people have, and they interchange a bit. So people Kyle got gonna... back into the game placements, and they go, Sonia, oh, oh it doesn't feel Kyle, good. Can I, can I stop you there? You froze yes. for like a good 30 seconds. <laughs> So I'm pausing. I'm pausing. You froze for 30 seconds. I, the entire first half of what you just said didn't make it. Oh, gotcha. Feel Kyle, good. Uh, one sec. I'm going to just restart recording here. Go. I do wonder if, like we talked about in previous weeks, if that Sonia comfort pick relates to the Artanis comfort pick. Stay engaged. Hit them. Slam. Uh, I stay alive. I did. People got back in the game. They saw Sonya wasn't powerful anymore, so they just went straight to Artanis. Or maybe they see Rainer and they go, auto attack hero, blind it. But I've seen Space Laser, so I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> I have yeah. not seen Space Laser. I've seen the blind uh, and all the Artanis is picked uh, probably for that reason. But um, yeah, I mean, although Space Laser isn't that bad, Rainer's not that fast moving. That would be really annoying to throw on a Rainer. I love Space Laser, man. I love it. I know that I know it's smarter oftentimes to take the uh, the blind, but I love I love just removing someone from the fight that way. It's so nice. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like it. I'm, I'm I'm back on the bright wing. I'm all in on bright wing again. I'm not using that monkey skin. I know I have it. I'm still not using it. Dude, that character needs some skins. Why <laughs> Why is there not a mecha bright wing skin? Give me that. Give me that metalized, cool looking Robo bright wing. Where's that skin? Please. Deathwing Welp, Brightwing. That's what I want. Yes. Brightwing needs some skins. Skins for Brightwing. We need to start a campaign. Hashtag skins for Brightwing. <laughs> I've been saying it for years. <laughs> years. I use a pink butterfly. That's, the, that's as creative as I can get because everything else is not great. I use the, 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 the poor man Zerg skin that they took years to add. Yeah, yep. not great. That's that's what I use. So uh, back to the patch. We already talked about Rainer's changes, but we didn't really get into what changed on Asmodan from the PTR. Um, he got some slight buffs. So his uh, his globe speed has been increased from 15 to 18, so it's moving a little quicker. You still, got a, you still have a decent warning to get out of the way of the globe, so. Yeah. Uh, and then All Shall Burn. Uh, his movement speed is now reduced by 30% while channeling. It used to be 40 so you're moving a little quicker, although still slower than usual when you're channeling all shell burn. You feel it though. He you can catch it. He it takes longer to step out of that aura. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's not a very long channel. You gotta be on your toes to break it before it completes and does the extra damage. Yeah. Depending on the hero, right? I mean if you're on a follow, you just vault well, out of there. And and that way too, like Rainer has the pushback. So I wonder if Asmodan's kind of being gate kept by new Rainer. It feels that way, right? Um, and again, I mean, it sounds like you're seeing Rainers in your draft. I, I am not. Uh, so my my games with Rainer and my games with Asmodan are almost exclusively quick match games, which means there's both. So I have this, my, my knowledge of the meta right now is very focused around Rainer versus Asmodan, which I don't think is going to really continue uh, once the, well, Asmodan is making it through bands, but once uh, Rainer starts making it through bands more more regularly, um, but it is, it's funny how much I'm comparing the two against each other because of how many times I've ended up as Rainer against an Asmodan this week. You're right, the pushback really does help. Uh, so uh, his uh, Tide of Sin cooldown, by the way, uh, is on It's 20 seconds now, which wow. it was 30 on the PTR. Globes, 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 globes. This this is what I was talking about. Like this, if if you are getting your stacks and you're going tight of sin, the orbs are nuts. Just complete bananas. The damage that they're turning out. And it's easy to forget that once you reach that amount of damage that instantly clears a lane, you are stacked. You are gonna get there. It's guaranteed at that point. And tight of sin gets you there if you haven't been doing a good job stacking. It definitely gets you there if you're doing a good job stacking. So it's just the pick. Yeah, and and it, it kind of, again, keeps you on your toes if you're playing against this Asmodan because it's easy in the early game because of the low damage that these orbs are doing to just be like, oh, I'll just stand in it. It's no big deal. I'm not going to 
I'm going to use my APM on getting out of the way, but suddenly it's, it's, it's uh, level 18 and these orbs are owning you. So it's this, it's this kind of crescendo of power that you need to keep in mind. And granted, that was there before, uh, but with more Asmodans in my games now, it's something I'm having to, to keep in the back of my mind. Um, and then the same thing as if you're playing Rainer and you take the, the increased attack speed at 20, you, you need to change how quickly you stutter step. <laughs> Funny. Got to change that play late game. So, uh, any of the other changes on Asmodan that you want to mention, Kyle? Uh, just a couple of incentivizations that were added, uh, mainly just kind of bacon. Some of the talents now add increased range to the orb or give you some mana back, which is very important in the art of Chaos 7, where you're going to be stacking up on heroes because that particular orb is just spamming orbs. And I really would encourage anyone who's trying to get an Asmodan to lead with that gluttony. Every time you hit an enemy at all, you're going to get a cooldown reduction on your globe. At level 7, take that Art of Chaos so you get some mana back, get more stacks for hitting heroes in the first place. This is the best way to finish out that quest around the 15-minute mark. And you have a level 20 talent that increases the damage, the area effect by 15%. And kind of like Nazebo, if you can stack in time, that's a really good power spike. Yeah. Well, Rad, uh, we've got links to these changes in full if you missed them already. The other thing to mention from this uh, from this patch, if you are playing outside of Hero League, is that the battleground pool is back to normal. So all of the battlegrounds that were removed uh, during Echoes of Alterac, they are now back. So much wider battleground pool once again, which means I'm seeing Echoes of Alterac. I'm actually, I've actually gotten it more this week than I did at all during Echoes of the Alterac event. Just... <laughs> because luck and it's also important to note that that is now in the ranked play rotation that alterac pass and the new braxis which is a different beast yeah I, both of them so fun though my goodness oh, i dude i am in love with the new braxis what are you what are you guys' thoughts yeah it's cool it's it's a cool change i thought it would really lengthen games but it, but it doesn't seem to have and I'm noticing, I think the reason for that is the the idea that the losing lane still gets uh, a very potent amount of Zerg. You know, it is, I, I played a, a game in uh, Unranked where the other team just left a, uh, a Zagara in a lane, in the, their losing lane, and they we, we beat them 100% to zero, and uh, the Zagara was able to take a fort. I mean, it was it was uh, pretty crazy. Just and we had a defense there, but because she had the support of you know more than just Zerglings, it was uh, it was hard to to stop her. As it should be, Zagara backed up by a guardian uh, should always win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the the Starcraft rule. Exactly, exactly. Well, we also had Braxis pop up during our coaching session yesterday, and one of the big things we were combating was your muscle memory to merge it onto that pad. Just say it's mine and touching this isn't going to matter. We had to get you forward a little bit and things like Urel might be more powerful in that situation with the ability to actually push somebody off. ETCs, something we don't see a lot on Braxis because it can get really exposed. It's often weak if silenced and there's Stukovs running around the zone, maybe Alarax. You're right. Yeah, just to underscore that point, uh, Kyle was, was telling me, you have to engage ahead of the pad because once they step on it, you lose control. So no longer is it just stay there it's actually push forward and make sure your engage happens before they ever get to the pad which is something you have to relearn it's it's uh it's a really big difference yeah it has changed the dynamic and and on the flip side of that if you're the one attacking into the pad they've managed to capture the excitement of like trying to steal a boss or a camp you know yeah. jumping on the point but now it's just all game long you get like that little rush of can we do it can we do it we did it we stopped them in time i had one i think today where it was like like 98% to like zero for a while. And it ended up bringing it all the way to a hundred at one point. So we just had these two wildly powerful Zerg waves. Cool. Uh, well, and because of that, with two, you know, active points at once, Genji probably deserves your ban here in mm -hmm. most leagues. He's always had the trick with the boss because the boss has his machine guns. He can burn down that thing like a champion, but he's able to use one, his jump, his cyber agility to jump one wall 
and then swift strike through the other and immediately be to the other pad. Sometimes people run a, a, a medieve for the same reason, a little more complicated, a bit more questionable. But there is a lot more exchange between the lanes and what we need various players to rotate and get done. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. For to me, it's just it's made the the team fight aspect of Braxis a lot more interesting. Well, and something important to note about the mechanics of the map now: if they get nothing, they get a fifty percent Zerg wave, and if they get a thirty-five percent, they get a fifty percent Zerg wave. So use that information as you may. And we're not really sure how to really ride with that yet. Is it, if it's at 90%, is it worth even trying to get a couple points for the team when our 10% doesn't make it a 60? It's still 50%. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Overall, I, I, I very much like it. I think it's a lot better than it used to be. Doesn't seem nearly as, uh, nearly as snowball-y. But, I mean, it can still happen, but... The, but the bad news is now I'm getting games, unranked games with haunted mines and garden terror. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would, oh God, I would really like to see haunted mines just removed. Me too. I, I really, really like. I've moved into a place of actively disliking that map again, and it's a bummer because I know they've tried to fix it, and it's, it just, I just don't enjoy that that map at all. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I would rather have original Hanamura. Yeah, yeah. Don't like I it. I agree. Don't care for it. Uh, there was an art and animation AMA. You know, it's you know on the fluffier side. <laughs> not a, not a, nothing uh, mind blowing that was uh, revealed in the AMA. Uh, but uh, they did say they are going to add more Diablo banners to the game. So a win for banners. They didn't talk about skins for Brightwing. I don't care. <laughs> That's kind of my thought too, Jeff. <laughs> so I skimmed it earlier. I was like, Brightwing, Brightwing, Control F, Brightwing, nothing? Okay, I don't care. Well, and there's a there's a feature that it just kind of has gone overlooked and that we have banners on the MVP screen now. They're right there. They're behind your character. I, I honestly had to be reminded of that fact. I think that's cool. It makes me care about my banner selection now. I, I never cared. Having it, you know, plug into a boss that I picked up or whatever, it's fine. But I'm basically leaving as soon as I do that so I don't get a chance to enjoy it. And the fact that I see it on the MVP screen, I, I think that's cool. I dig that. Well, I, you, we're checking talents. We're checking top damage. We're seeing who's healed the most. What what tank is soaking? What should we do our damage into? No one's walking by a down fort and being like, oh, who did this? <laughs> oh, was it, was it Raynor over? Oh, the Raynor. Everyone get the Raynor. Oh, uh, uh, l- listen <laughs> yeah. to this. I don't play support by or a specialist bias. Because as a specialist, I'm like, yeah, all those flags are mine. <laughs> painting, the, painting the map with banners. <laughs> like, that's, my, you know, that's my Fort Rebel. That's my Fort Rebel, that's my keep rebels. Eat it. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. Like you know, like birthday candles. We need to line them all up. And if we got to the end of the game, and I'm like, wow, Zagara, four banners. That's pretty sweet. I think that's a really good idea. That's a really cool idea. Like it has like a tally that comes up with all the banners. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just got. Like, oh, they should make little icons for like the banner and what it's associated with, like a uh, boss banner, camp banner, fort banner, keep banner. And we we got our you know headhunters and our you know mercenary captures and our get out alive or tallies, but maybe that maybe that spice it up a little bit. I like it. I wanted like a like a you know painted on the side of my jet fuel slodge, like all the all the takedowns I've had. I want all my <laughs> all my fort banners just lined up. On the every s- every fifth banner is is slanted to the side and crossing out the other four banners. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's good. I like it. I, I like what you've landed on. I realize it's uh, based on last hit, not necessarily the most damage done to a structure, but yeah, still, whatever. It's cool. Um, but yeah, we've got some uh, we've got some good emails, uh, and that's what we're going to end up wrapping today's episode up with. But before we do that, we have some patrons to thank who are supporting us over at patreon.com slash ITN. Uh, if you enjoy Into the Nexus and you get some value from it, this is this is the best way to support the show. It's completely opt-in. The show's free, still going to be free, but if you'd like to give a dollar or two uh, to the show, head on over to patreon.com slash ITN. That's the reason, Jeff, you join us every month. We had a goal. We were like, man, it's fun when Jeff's on. We'd like to pay him to do that once a month. And our patrons are like, yeah, we would too. And we have enough. We're making enough. 
we get we actually pay you every month when you show up on the show and i'm very grateful uh i very much appreciate it, it it's uh to be quite honest you know i had two small kids it's not always easy to add in new projects and to be able to actually say hey you know i'm not just donating my time i'm i'm paid to be here is uh it's it's easy to explain that to my wife <laughs> so i appreciate it guys and i love doing the show and i love to be here so i'm i'm super grateful to the patrons who make it possible well red man and we had such a fabulous time with our patrons last week during the bonanza we had so many close games only fell to a single cho goal in all the games throughout it great job everybody just crazy boss deals, crazy comebacks. It's always awesome getting to play with y'all. I was so tired. Like, it just just mentally and physically exhausted at the end because you're right. The, la the last two games of the night, they were both wins, but they were like skin of our teeth. <laughs> like, just completely nuts. Uh, so thank you for coming by the, the Bonanza last week. Uh, we do them every month. Uh, it is usually five games of Team League. We schedule them ahead of time, and that is one of the perks of being an Into the Nexus patron. Uh, and we also have some new patrons to thank. Newer. We go in the order as you signed up. Thank you to Macho King, spelt all leet like with zeros and ones instead of O's and I's. Thank you to George, no last name given, Axel B L and Joe K. Thank you for the support, everybody. And I'm going to give just an uh, extra little shout because uh, she ended up tweeting at me. I ended up uh, in a game with a patron today I don't believe I have played with before. It was just like, hey, are you are you the Garrett? And I was like, I'm a Garrett. <laughs> like, <laughs> turned out they were a listener of the show and a patron. So uh, uh, Kana, even though I lost every game today, that was without a doubt the highlight of my day because that was a good game. We made him work for it. Yeah. But uh, thanks again, patrons. And if you like Into the Nexus, check out patreon.com slash ITN. Now let's uh, crack open the mailbag and see what we got. Darkness stopped calling. Hold on. Darkness just texted me. Okay, tell them I'm not here. You can send your emails into itncast at gmail.com. Pink Ghost writes in and says, So I consider myself a bit of a tank player, playing a lot of ETC, Anubarak, and Johanna, as well as a few other tanks. I find a decent success in those heroes. Uh, the way I view it, I have two roles to play. Aggressive initiator and defensive peeler. My issue is I don't think I always understand when I should be switching between these two roles. The most common scenario I find myself in is when my team is a few levels down. I know that finding an easy pick could be one of the best ways to start chugging the comeback train along, so I'll try to initiate a fight if I see an enemy squishy out of position, but because of their level lead, the squishy survives, and uh, no longer in a defensive blocking position, I have baited my entire team to their deaths. So I have a two-part question for the ITN crew. Is my tanking mentality the correct one? If so, how do I better train myself to understand what role I should be playing at the specific time? If not, is there a better mentality you suggest I try in my approach to tanking in the Nexus? It's a good question. It is. And I would like Jeff to lead with it because he did an awesome job on Muradin yesterday. And I'd love to see how that compared to how you sort of play during your more passive times when mm. I'm not barking at you to keep on engaging. Yeah. I mean, I would say uh, in this particular, I, I think that's an accurate uh, assessment of the, the tank role from a macro perspective. And I think that um, the, the particulars of that dilemma of uh, initiating a fight, and uh, getting out of position and leading your team to doom is one I've certainly encountered and found myself uh, guilty of as well. But I think one of the things that Kyle always uh, stresses is body language. And I think as the tank, your body language is extremely important. And yeah, initiating that fight to, a, to a, an opponent out of position is a good one, but you also have to initiate the retreat if the, things are not going well. And it's kind of, um, I think clear indicators to your team as to uh, when you're getting out of dodge, when you are trying to uh, uh, realize that their team has responded in a way that's going to be bad for your team. You don't initiate a fight and then just, you know, stick it out until everybody's dead. You got to assess the situation on the flying and keep communicating to your team and keep pushing forward or back as needed. Um, I don't know. 
if that's something that you would agree with, Kyle. But I think that's that's how I handle it. No, I agree completely. And one of the things you didn't say there was using something like a retreat thing. That right. is disastrous. All you're doing is adding noise to the team fight and then doing the opposite of what you're suggesting everyone else do because I'm going to be okay. I'm the tank. No, we all need to run together and I'll be the last one out for you. But <laughs> I'm taking care of this team. And one thing I'd like to add to his statements here would be value reducer. It's probably the better way to say it. And that is something along the lines of what happens a lot in our tank games, particularly because you're off in this off tank, the mobile tank on a Muradin. Li Ming, her orb deals less damage if it doesn't go as far. So being in her face and catching that early for my lower league team that isn't going to dodge it in the first place is a great way to reduce the overall damage of the enemy side. And something we worked with a lot yesterday was versus Jaina. Jaina gets that chill out. That's great. She just put her one frost bolt that she has to wait on a cooldown and spend mana on into you, the tank with the biggest health pool. Cool, but now we're chilled and she can kill us. So we've already reduced her base value. That ice bolt should have gone into your backline, into your squishies. She's not set up to kill anyone else but you. So we bail, we jump away and let her kind of live with her awful decision now. And a lot of that is about just getting in there and making sure that you scare the Jaina's blizzard out of her. Cool, now that blizzard's on top of tank. We jump away, up, oh, value reduced. But we gotta think of the opposite too when we start dealing with sustained damage. I can heal off sustained damage on Muradin, on ETC. But if they're just sitting there hammering me, it's not costing Rainer a darn tootin' thing for him to burn down your health. And we need to make sure we're not taking those sort of hits. And the other thing that you have stressed, uh, especially yesterday, was... Um, recognizing who you are tanking for on your team. Um, there are several moments where, yeah, you can be in there disrupting them and that's all good. But if if a, an enemy is, uh, you know, attacking your Jaina or, you know, your Kael'thas or somebody that that is important to keep alive, it's your responsibility to address that and get in between them and figure out a way to save that uh, that assassin that is going to be the one that's going to get those kills. Um, so understand that, you, yes, you're offensively tanking, but you're defensively tanking as well. And, you know, it's your job to get in between those 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 frost bolts and uh, intercept those orbs in a way that protects the people that are most valuable to your team. And Murden's such a great example of this because of the Thunderburn build into some healing static. You can really take care of yourself avatar you know grab up that stone form later on but a lot of what you're doing is just being completely immune unless there's an assassin over there so many times in the lower league i see somebody uh, they run into the objective but oh no johanna and regar are there i gotta run away no what if, what is johanna and regar gonna do to you the tank nothing what's johanna and regar gonna do to your kale thoughts everything he's a dead man he gets slowed he gets butt bite he's dead but for you, you can make that last. You can get some cool stuff done in there. Enemy assassin shows up. Now it's time to bail. And same thing goes with continuing that engagement. Look at that enemy side. We talk about core comps a lot. You got to have a damage to get something done. If it's just a support and a tank, pursue. You're already winning. Stay aggressive. And communicating that over the course of the game is really important. With an eye on your mini map always so you know when that assassin's about to show up and join the party. <laughs> exactly lots and lots of elements come into play but if if you are struggling with you know, figuring out how to engage try out talents like dwarf launch where hitting an enemy hero at level 16 reduces the cooldown of your dwarf toss you get armor every time you jump like that 25 armor that's 25 percent reduced damage when you engage they're dealing less damage to you you're reducing that value then when you disengage at that proper time, you were causing those misses. Same things with your rel. You know, think about how when you're going in, all these abilities are first and foremost aggressive abilities. When you're running away, that communication's lost on your team, and they think you're scared. They're gonna blame you. Tanks are always one of the first guys to get blamed. We a lot of us come from World of Warcraft, where the healers were always blamed. Not true in MOBAs. Tanks are the people people dump on. It sucks. They, they didn't see your previous five games where you were a god. They missed it. I'm sorry. And it's a tough thing about being tank. I mean, 
putting the Muradin uh, aside, do we have any tips for the the warriors he specifically mentioned? Because ETC and Anubarak, I see a through line. Johanna is very different, a uh, very different type of tank from ETC and Anubarak. Um, and this, th- like that's also where I'm kind of, I'm seeing maybe there's a disconnect in the trying to make a pick. Like ETC and Anubarak, they have an engage. They can make a pick. Johanna doesn't really. No, and she's immune a lot of the time, thanks to her unstoppable, her iron skin. Uh, both Anubarak and ETC can be really hard to play because the second they stop casting, they're dead. And that's why I'm running a lot of Varian right now, Taunt Varian. Normally, taunting the tank is a bad idea, but when it comes to Anubarak and ETC, they're dead men on the field every time when they're locked down. It's just like what Johanna, we talked about. So much. Just like what we talked about with Polymorph and the Artanis earlier. It's the same concept. Right. You're stopping them from doing the thing that makes them live. Um, and this even kind of reinforces my earlier statements about why we have our top tier supports right now. You said you're the aggressive in, engager, initiator. You don't have to be that if you have the Deckard and the Malfurion in that case. Yeah. Now or follow up. Or a bruiser on your team. That's the other thing is like your comp has as much to do with this as the enemy comp. Like if, if you're on the Johanna and there's like a Thrall or a Sonya on your team, that's really not your job. You're, you need to protect the back line. And if a sweet wolf or a sweet spear comes in and actually catches somebody that's out of position, that's when you can step up and join the fight. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're protecting the back line. And the same goes for ETC or Anubarak. Depending on your comp and the opposing comp, you're going to be wanting to save your, your dive movement abilities to engage on your own back line to save them if something comes diving in like a Genji. Yeah, that's what I find so fun about Decker joining the meta so prominently and seeing so many of him in in games is it's so fun to have the healer be the one that initiates a team fight. How cool is that? That triangle comes down, you catch somebody in a stun, and it's on. Everybody pounces, and you didn't even use any of your cooldowns to start it up. It was the healer who started it up. It's, uh, I find that so fun. And same thing for Malfurion's, um, you know, grassy, grassy grab. I think it's called grassy grab, right, guys? Yeah. yeah perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we got we got Rainer's trait renamed. I think we should get Entangling Roots renamed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I vote for that. Uh, yeah, but it's all, all these things that you go in, out, go into. I'm also curious, like, are, are you waiting for your full team? Because it sounds like there's just a, an overall damage issue being had here. Because if you do catch somebody and they truly are out of position, they should die. Uh, there's there's two things right there that raise up alarms. Either you don't have enough damage, maybe your whole team isn't with you, or uh, the, you might might not be keeping close enough eye on the mini map because the team is the opposing team is showing up sooner than you expect to save what you thought was a safe pick. Right. I mean, the second you start falling behind in levels as tank, it can be a bummer game, and it can feel like you just want to get out of there as fast as possible. Your job then really becomes anchoring, as we know it which is to put your face in the bush and be the one who can survive that particular scouting adventure. If a team sees damage coming, they never have to take it in the first place. And this is very important on places like Braxis. You know, when you start falling behind a lot on Braxis, you lose map control. You do not have access to your mercenary camps anymore. So letting your team take that bigger mercenary camp while you sit in that forward, you know, vent allows them to have the site necessary. And if they need to bail, they can bail. And if you let them know earlier that they need to bail and they really see those red marks coming as a group, one red mark, oh, we'll keep doing it, two, three, oh, okay, let's all get out. And that's really the defining moment. That's why people won't stop taking that merc- merc- mercenary camp is because they saw one red dot and now suddenly there's five on them. There was no progression to this and people get headstrong and that they can still pull this off. My, my, can I ask? Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead, Jeff. Well, I'm, I'm going to spin us off into a weird direction so if you had something pertinent for that go ahead <laughs> I was saying my, my, my last my last thought that you may want to experiment with is playing bruisers yourself because you clearly have a head for making picks so why not you know give it a try it's, but and, and you know depending on how you're feeling depending also how the drafts are going if you're finding a lot of players are wanting to step up and tank try playing an off roll try playing something that hasn't engaged that has a lockdown that can make a pick not that a new Barak is lacking in that regard. Right. So I have a question for you guys, and and this may be a Pandora's box we don't want to get into now, but it's something that occurred to me this week, and I, I'm curious what you guys think. 
Uh, I have been I've played several games with uh, uh, let's say very fresh players to the game, which is great. Love seeing new new players in our game. Love expanding the audience. Uh, but you know, people with like in the teens of of player level, uh, so very very new players. And uh, I'm reminded of something I've heard you guys mention a lot with regard to trying to get people to soak lanes, uh, especially in the early game, you know, three lane map, I'm down in one, we got four people having a brawl in the center because that's fun going up and soaking XP in the top lane, not as fun, hard to convince people to do it. And it led led me to, to think, why? Why do, <laughs> like, is there, is there, why do we need to, in a game, why do we need to have something that we need to do that isn't particularly as fun as the other stuff? I know it's a big conversation and probably not something we can even have time to get into, but I, and I also know I'm kind of describing brawl mode, which is like, it's all just fights. But I also feel like, well, soaking XP, I mean, I feel like Here's the Storm was already a response and answer to other MOBAs in, in a way, you know, having team leveling instead of, you know, and not having last hits and all these tedious things that were sort of, you know, vestiges of, of that genre. I also feel like having a r- XP race in the first phase of the game, maybe we need to rethink that. Is that crazy? I, I mean, maybe because it's just so revolutionary and I'm a, a stuck in the mud, grumpy old man when it comes to this, but uh, I, boy, that I, it sounds just so unappealing to me. <laughs> like the thought of, uh, cause then it would, it would just be objective and bashing your, your faces together. I like the way that the necessity for soaking causes an in-between objective. It's the objective when the objective isn't up. It's right. and, and it causes a natural course of things. It's the ecosystem of the map. Um, and whether it's two or three lanes and also the size of the map, something like Warhead Junction, for example, it can really affect the way that the game feels. Um, so Yeah, no, I agree with you, and I, and I enjoy it too. I like that structure to the game, but it feels like we're always talking about how do we convince people to do the thing that isn't fun? And it's like, oh, well, if it's not fun, why do we have to do it? It's a right. game. The big know. hole is like in quick match where you pick something for fun and you really want to play that hero and then you don't get to play the game that you want to play and you wish you were somebody who could take Merc camps. And like what you're asking for is a a lack of strategy in a sense. Like take XCOM and all we do is missions. We never go back to the base and build anything. We right. never, you know, we never go organize our heroes and, and put I, I relics in their slots on darkest dungeon. Well, you we can just, you can tell what Kyle's been playing. Yeah, yeah. You just <laughs> you just grind all day long. The one of the best ways, and when people come to me and, and they say, "I just want to climb," all I want, I just want ranks. I, I want a badge that shows the work I put in this game. Merc camp management and rotations are where that strategy impact truly is. When you are mouthfeel you push out your lane. Nobody's there. They're all just fighting in the middle. You reach that wall. You do no bonus damage to buildings. You now have a strategic choice and impact on the game. You can go join that fight in the middle again if you want. You can go take a Merc camp right now if you want. And that choice is what allows us to really feel outside of those team levels and the support didn't heal me and the tank didn't peel for me. That's where your individual impact comes from. Now, if you're some of those other classes, yeah, you know, there's there's no stopping it. And in that case, you really kind of get draft dependent. The game gets a little muddy there. Johanna had more CC and was better at it than my Muradin did because he could only hit one person at a time because he wasn't stacked up yet. So her vacuum CC with a Chromie won the game at that point for them. Yeah, I guess I also would just like my other kind of point would be that, that I think it is fun. Uh like it's, it's yeah. if you're if you're you know having this discussion under like the hypothetical that it is uh, an accepted fact that it is unfun, then I think all of this is fine. But but it, the truth of it is, I would push back and be like, no, I I enjoy it. I get a great deal of joy out of rotating correctly, out of soaking correctly, out of knowing that I got there just in time and 
that's what got us to 10 when otherwise we would have still been like a quarter way down in level nine. Yeah, fair enough. No, I, I agree. I, I enjoy those systems as well. I just found myself in that situation going, I'm trying to convince somebody to go to stop doing the thing they're having fun with, which is trying to kill another person, another player, and go attack these robots in the top, <laughs> you know, for that. It's, you know, it's kind of by rote. You just kind of kill all those little robots. Uh, and I went, oh, huh. I, I understand why somebody wouldn't want to do that pretend, potentially. I, I do, um, yeah. And I guess, like, another part of the, like, this conversation is, like, I, like, I don't know. I'm almost beating around the bush because it's, like, I don't want to come off like I'm judging other players and saying that certain players are, I don't know, not, not as, what's the word I'm looking for, not, not as learned in the constructs of the game. But I think enjoyment comes with understanding. I think you would enjoy definitely. defending uh, that wave coming in if you understand how important it is uh, to not lose that wall, to not lose that fort, to not lose that keep, and also get the XP that's gained from that. Um, and that's, I, I, I don't know how to say that without sounding just a little bit judgy. Like, I feel like that just inherently sounds judgmental of like, well, if no, you I knew how to play the game. I think it's the, the, the correct response. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the correct way of, way of putting it. And I'm, I'm glad I brought it up because uh, you guys have, have given me clarity there. And I agree. I, I just, uh, and I think that comes from those people getting more experience. And there's nothing wrong with pointing that out. No, it's, it's the, the kid's water balloon fight. You, you fill it up, takes a few seconds, you hand it to the child. And they've never seen one before, and they drop it, and it's like, oh, whoa, whoa, that was sweet. Like, no, 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 you throw it at something, like, wait, this gets funner. <laughs> so it, it is that it, it's that tough kind of learning, and they're gonna lose games, and it's not gonna feel good. The question there is, does the game provide feedback to how important those other places are? No, right. and something we've talked about <laughs> in the past is, yeah, that the XP isn't shown, that when you are winning, getting a kill is worth less than a whole lane that's bizarre and even in our own games there like something i had to even tell you was stop farming we're 20 what what is there to farm for there's nothing right. there's no levels left to get but we've been playing all game and the minions feel good and they fly across the screen one of them hits the screen like you know with the 3d effects and it, it keeps rewarding that aspect of it but it's not correct yeah it's a double-edged sword right like there's a certain point in the game where that is no longer what you should be doing and so, like, if they added something in the game, some type of UI element that showed, like, a negative connotation associated with a, a wave crashing in a wall and dying, I don't know if, like, gray XP numbers come up and, like, break and crack and disappear or something, <laughs> um, but I feel like you would need a sound associated with it, because you're probably not even looking at it in the first place. If you're not there to, to soak it, you're not seeing it anyway, and how right. do you design something like that without, A, being annoying, because waves are constantly marching across the map and then what do you do at level 20 do you turn it off because it's misleading to have this like kind of negative feedback loop of missing out on xp when it's actually not that important and not what you should be focusing on at that point in the game well what, what do you guys think of this like what if asmodan and nazebo both had custom lines where you know he was like those are mine when he pinged a lane minion mm -hmm. and communicated that he wants those stacks like simple things like that aren't it, they're so important in the Zebo and Asmodan, but they don't, you don't know that until you buy them. And in a free to play game system like this, you may never buy that hero. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That'd be an interesting way to, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I, Somehow I, I think was thinking it was like uh, in the, on the mini map, maybe if a lane is going unsoaked, it, it's a different color. Uh, like, you know, it's like a little red tint to it that's going unsoaked. But again, you're right. Later in the game, it's uh, it's unimportant or less important. Uh, so, you know, it, it's like, I guess I, I guess you don't really want training wheels on the game the whole time. You you have to be sophisticated enough to understand it. But uh, it's 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 a learning curve. And I guess that's OK. And that's what these games are all about. Yeah. If, and to share something that's, you know, kind of shocking when you think about heroes of the storm when you left the lane in dota what are you doing you are killing the team you're getting no gold what are you even doing in my lane you're stealing my gold even get out get out are you trying to have fun here kind of thing comes up and also when a computer like a little lane minion hits each other or the tower like let's say a whole minion wave two whole minion waves hits that fort and it just clears it all that gold is spread across the team so when that's happening top lane, there's no one there. I'm bottom lane doing my business, 
and I see a failure on my team, that is success for me because that gold is going to be shared by the computer across all five players. Could have gone to one guy, but instead I get a fifth of it. And I'm winning now. I'm winning harder. I'm a better hero in that way. And I'm rewarded for your failure. So that is such an important aspect. When they are in the middle, we're breaking even. Both teams are missing out on XP. No harm done. Let's five man the middle all day. But when one person's there, there is a huge detriment. And that needs to be communicated. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's a balance. It's, it's, a, it's a design challenge. It's an interface challenge. Um, I don't have an answer, but it's also balance, right? It's, it's a balancing act. It's, you bring up a good point, Jeff. Like how much do you really want the training wheels? Yeah. So. Well, sorry to tangent us like that. But no, it's fine. Show is going a bit short anyway. Uh, we do have another email today. Uh, unpronounceable, which I love as a name. That's me. <laughs> I mean, it's not actually me, but I'm. Uh, that's my. That's my gamer tag on Xbox Live, and my gamer tag on P- PSN, and oh, my really? gamer tag on Steam is is the word unpronounceable. I, d- I did not know that. That's that's yeah. amazing. And now I'm going to add you on Xbox Live, Jeff. <laughs> Please uh, see your drive avatar add up in my for- and all up in my Forza. Uh, mm-hmm. Unpronounceable writes. I'm a relatively new Hots player. For reference, I have about eight characters at level eight or nine, and a bunch more around level five. In a lot of the community discussion about the game, a bunch of hero descriptors come up and aren't, re- oh, sorry, come up that aren't referenced in the game at all, as far as I can tell. Terms like tanks, mages, and bruisers are all used to describe heroes, and while I can intuit what a mage is, I really don't grok the difference, is that a reference to something I'm missing? <laughs> uh, between a bruiser versus a tank, and I don't know what other terms there are that I'm just unaware of. Can you give a brief rundown on the informal roles slash classes that you give heroes? Uh, listening to ITN has helped change the way I think about the game, and I'm hoping I'll be able to translate some of this to my friends who are just as new or are newer to the game than I am. P.S. If you don't mind answering a second question, how did the community decide that top lane should be the soloed lane on two lane maps? Come to that in a second. Uh, let's break out the hero's glossary, Jeff and Kyle. I hope everyone brought their books. Please turn to page 17. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, honestly, you kind of hit on the most commonly used class terms that aren't explicitly in the game itself. Um, the only thing being, bruisers technically, like if I'm going to be a super dork about it, is technically in the game, if you hover over the warrior icon under hero select, there's a little tagline that says frontline defenders and bruisers. But it doesn't tell you what the hell they are or what hero is which. Um, they've been talking a while. Like, I'm not crazy, right, Kyle? Like They said, I feel like over a year ago, that they were going to add, like they were going to reclassify heroes and add new terms. And that hasn't happened. Yeah, the it, what we learned from the art panel as well is there is a lot of things they would like to do. And they are intensely difficult to do when they're not inside the game. Balance, even changing the maps, is easier than making a new home screen. Which seems bananas, but that's the state of things. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I guess let's just uh, let's just get into it. So, I mean, he says he can into it with mages, but mage is literally a mage. You know, your cloth wearing, low health, high burst damage, glass cannons. That's and that. I think the better way to kind of get into this would be that burst because that can transform your mind a little bit to thinking about how you can augment your own team. You, know, you take uh, Tychus. All right, sweet. But your team has no wizards running around just blowing people up. So you decide at 16 you're going to take Titan Grenade to do more burst damage rather than something like Lead Rain, which is just going to help you connect your kill over time spell. Right. And um, so, yeah, there's a difference between burst and sustain, which is a very common descriptor to specify damage dealers. So burst is usually locked out by cooldown and mana cost and does a lot of damage uh, at once at one big time. Whereas we use Rainer because we've talked about him so much today, that would be a sustain hero. Like the, the crux of his damage comes from his auto attack, which doesn't cost him anything as long as he can stay in range and keep landing auto attacks. No. Uh, as for tanks and bruisers, I mean, uh, tanks, uh, for me, it's a term that comes from World of Warcraft, comes from MMOs. This is the defender. This is Kyle. You, you mentioned the term anchoring, which is another term. 
that we should probably define. How do, how do you define anchoring? It is being able to, I mean, like an anchor for a ship, it is the safety. And when you pull it up, we are no longer safe in this zone. We need to be carried by the tide, if you will. <laughs> mm, poetic. Putting down, yeah, putting down our footprint here. Here's where we stand. Up, oh, picking up the anchor, moving to a new location, everybody. Yep. No longer <laughs> safe. Yep. Yeah. I want a recut of 300 where he's like, this is where we hold them. This is where we fight. And then he's like, oh, wait, nope, we're moving slightly to the right. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're re-anchoring Hold Spartans. Back. Yeah, <laughs> it, It's actually unfortunate that the game just clumps everybody under the warrior heading. Because the warrior moniker is completely uninformative. It doesn't, it doesn't help to say that, you know, uh, Diablo and Artanis are in the same category. Or, uh, you know, it, it's, it's you know, Johanna and, and Varian are in the same category. It's very bizarre. Well, and, and some of these have like classifiers to them that are uniform, like ETC Diablo, not going to go through a lane fast, missing lane clear. But then you have Johanna, who does a decent job and compare that to something like even Urel and Sonya, Artanis. They're just going to burn through that lane. And that's an important aspect to have outside of our sort of base support, your know, DPS and tank roles. I don't understand when they you know when they uh, introduce a new hero they do those wonderful introduction videos and they point out all of the cool things that they're good at and the things that they're not good at why not just leave that in the game like leave that clickable in the game i can either watch that video or just that information screen where it's like good for self sustaining i don't understand why they, they took the time to classify the hero in that way and make that slide just leave it in the game yeah, well, it, then I, then I, you I feel the be... same way Let's do the steam system it says yeah. psychological horror action shooter like just tag it right. tag the heroes yeah as for the videos they would have to then update them every time there's a patch that drastically changes the hero well that's a good point <laughs> kind of but if you just a... do that slide i mean that's pretty easily updatable and if you're you know reworking the hero anyway you update the slide that, that, that there now i'm in now I'm in. You've got me. You've got me, Jeff. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, but and, and then again, yes, the word bruiser comes up if you hover over warrior, but it's actually kind of misleading because there are bruisers that are not warriors. Warrior in, in it's too much of a catch-all in Heroes of the Storm. It kind of just means a lot of health or armor. Yeah. Like you're a beefy, right. harder to kill character. Uh, but within the warrior class lies tanks and bruisers, but there are also bruisers in the assassin group yeah like why is thrall not a warrior yeah he's an assassin but he's he's really a bruiser at the end of the day it's this, this concept of so a bruiser is like a more damage oriented but still high health and durable right but they don't you they don't usually have enough talents to make them to be uh, an effective tank for your team like sonya by herself doesn't get the job done you know sonya is more of a bruiser than she is a tank you put sonya with a tank like johanna You've got yourself a good front line. Yeah, those simple categories I think are meant to to be to simplify things and make it less confusing. And all they do is obfuscate the really useful information. I think. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see just a, a tag system. Yeah, because um, because Varian, depending on the her heroic you you pick, drastically changes it. He can be more of a bruiser, or he can be a tank if you go taunt. He's a straight up tank if you go taunt. Um. But, but yeah, that's kind of, that's the basic gist of it. I'd also like to point you to Icy Veins. They actually have a glossary of terms, and it is ex extensive uh, for Heroes of the Storm. So I've, I've thrown a link in the chat room. If you want to type it in by hand, get ready for some dashes. It's icy-veins.com slash heroes slash glossary dash of dash terms. Wow, this is a really exhaustive list. Yes. Even Winmore is on here. <laughs> Which is a term I've never used in the history of gaming. And, and a lot of these are about like how you choose to punish your team, like poke or the lane clear kind of conversation. And that if the enemy side, like Asmodan's a great example of a burst spell. But if it hits the whole other team on the other side of the map and Rhaegar has a chance to heal everybody up, it's not really burst anymore as we define it in a team fight. Yeah. But this is a great glossary. This is excellent. Yeah, there's some really good really good terms in there. But tank is defending, versus doing damage. That's kind of like the ba the most basic way I can split those two. So 
Uh, but welcome. Enjoy the game. <laughs> welcome to Heroes of the Storm. Unpronounceable. As for which lane was decided why we always do the top lane, a lot of the maps are laid out uh, in opposites. So it's not that you have more access to the particular Merc camps. Uh, some of it has to do with just that the team in the bottom has the camera pointing up, so people load into the bottom a lot of the time. Yeah. If anything, now that I think of it on Abraxas, it almost seems counterintuitive because the more difficult camp is on your side of the map at the top. Wouldn't you want more people to actually be able to take that efficiently? <laughs> it's strange. And, it, you know, you could think, too, like on Braxis, if you're on that left side, well, you got the fire bats right there. So you can spare a person to go grab the fire bats and rejoin the team fight. But the side doesn't have that option. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'd like to apologize to Unpronounceable for taking his gamer tag on all the other... In fact, I would have been unpronounceable on Blizzard Net, but it's too long. They wouldn't. They won't let you be unpronounceable on on. Uh, it's too too many letters. Ooh, tweeted us unpronounceable. I want to know how you uh, what 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 got cut from your handle <laughs> to make it on Battle Net. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thanks for those emails. Keep them coming. Itncast at gmail dot com. It's gonna wrap it up for this episode. We are at the end. We made it. We did it. It's a brave new hero's world right now, especially if you like Rainer or Asmodan. Uh, and you're not drafting. <laughs> uh, thanks again to our patrons for supporting us. Uh, if you want to support into the Nexus, go to patreon.com slash ITN. Huge thanks to our Patreon producers, Declan H and Cheesy Bob. Thank you for the generosity. Uh, we have t-shirts available at shirts.amove.tv. We also have custom etched glassware, pint glasses, coffee mugs, stuff like that that you can find at etched.amove.tv. TV. We're typically live Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash amovetv. We're an hour later today and expect that in the future whenever Jeff is on. Thank you guys for that. I appreciate it. Hey, man. We're glad you can still join us. Uh, follow us on Twitter at ITNCast and around the table before we go, Jeff, where can everybody find the other work that you do? Well, uh, as we mentioned a couple of times, Kyle coaches me every week on a stream I do for Caffeine. Uh, it's Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific time. You can find that at caffeine.tv slash Jeff Canada. It's live only, so uh, be there. Check us out. Have fun watching and learning as I am. Uh, I also do a video game podcast called DLC, which you can find at 5x5.tv slash DLC. Rad. I love DLC. Everyone should go subscribe to it right now. Thanks. Kyle and I have been on it before. That's right. Go, go d unearth those episodes. It's been a little while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gonna, I'm gonna have you guys back. Bring it, bring yeah. it. Yeah, uh, Kyle. What about yourself? Uh, this week, I'd like to point everyone to YouTube.com/slash Kyle Ferguson. I've done something a little bold over there. I have posted all of my placement games. A big old two and a half pa pile, five hours in total of doing those ten games back to back. And I do feel like this is important. If nothing else to cue through it, everyone's going to lose. We we talk about here our wins. We talk about what we get frustrated about. But mostly you hear about climbing and all the fun I'm having on Urel. That's when I get to pick Urel. What do I do when I lose all my picks? What happens when I'm entirely ban out of my Kalefoss? Everything I wanted to take. Losses happen. You only win when you're climbing about 65% of your games. I went 50-50. That was a great time. And it's important to kind of keep that perspective. So check out that if you're feeling like you're having trouble solving the own, your own puzzles in your own leagues or just having trouble kind of getting into the game with how punishing sometimes the score screen and the points falling can be on you. Well said, Kyle. Oh, you always got a good head on your shoulders. I try. <laughs> it's a learned skill. It does not does not come easily to anyone but uh i'm garrett art on twitter if you want to follow me on there all of the podcasts that i do can be found at amove.tv uh, i will promote kyle and i's morning show that we do on mondays it is called week sauce it is spelt like days of the week and it is all one word it is really nerdy really nerdy you should go listen to it we help you start off your week uh, and uh, you should go subscribe to Week Sauce wherever podcasts can be found. Everything else is at amove.tv. It's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thank you again, everyone, for listening. Thank you to our patrons for the support. And until next week, good luck and have fun. Take care. Stay positive. Don't die. Yeah. Good show, gents.
Thanks, fellas. I really appreciate you uh, being flexible on the time. It, it helps me out greatly. So thank you. I Absolutely, am, man. It's no trouble. I am glad. I started losing my voice like crazy in the middle of that show. I don't know what the hell happened. I didn't notice. That's... No, sounded fine. Yeah. Well, All right, dudes. I'm going to go uh, take care of children. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> I'll see you. See you, man. Thanks again. Bye. All righty then. Fantastic. Good show. Still on. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. All right, man. Uh, so, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> uh, he was asking, uh, he was late. Can we start the show for him? Can we start the show? Yeah, restart it. Restart oh, restart it. He just, it. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. He missed it. Just, yeah, just go over again. Uh, I'm sitting down. I'm sick of standing. Mm. Yeah. But, chat room, you've been lovely this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, I got this wonderful Kyle sweat happening across both windows and it doesn't it doesn't even make sense doesn't even make sense <laughs> uh, there we go it was a little low but uh yeah good show everybody thank you chat room and uh i'm gonna go ahead and uh drop the stream so that i can get the vod up on the youtube and get the podcast posted so y'all have a good night